Hey everyone, welcome back to another video with Notion Workflow. In today's video, I will be showing you how to show entries between two dates using Notion formulas. We can also add them up if we'd like. I'll show a few manipulations that we can also do where we extract entries between two dates. As you can see, I have two databases, one for projects and one for tasks, and they are both related to each other. We're gonna use this date property to compare which dates fall in between the two dates that we specify. And then we'll have another date property within the task database that we'll compare it to and we'll output if that date falls between these dates. This is sort of building on one of my other videos where we are adding up entries specific to month. And this is sort of connected, sort of related formula and requests that I've gotten in the comments. The next few formula videos that will be coming out will be related to how we can manipulate dates in the way we want to. Let's get started right away. We have a formula in the projects area. And again, because we are mapping these tasks and their dates in relation to the projects, we're gonna start with the map function. We want to map the relation, which is tasks, that's the database. And we wanna filter based on whether that date related to the task falls between the dates that we specify here. We want to start by mapping the relation and then filtering by the current date. And the reason why we have two date properties is because this date property lives in the task database and this date property lives in the project database. And I've just added that little brackets at the end so that we can differentiate which one is which. We have map tasks, the relation, and then we'll filter. Sometimes when you type in current, it doesn't always register if you type in current dot. If that is the case, I just like to delete it and then select the current variable that it suggests within the formula property to make it easier on ourselves. So we can click on current. And now we can click on dot and we can see that date property that we can select. Right here, we're filtering based on the date of the related task. And we wanna also compare that to the date that we have here within our projects. And so the way that we're gonna be able to manipulate both the front or the beginning and end date or the range in which we're specified within this property is by using the date start and date end formula function. Because we want to make sure that this date is after or on the date that we started, we can add that inequality symbol where it's greater than or equal to, and we can use that date start formula function on the date that we're referencing from projects database. So notice how there's two different date properties and that's by design because we don't want to mix up the two by accident. Here we can just close it out and say, we just want to map tasks in which the current date is later than the start date of what we're specifying. And because this is a map function and we're filtering it first, we also need to represent it by specifying current and then specifying a property in which we want to output it as. Now, when we close it, it says all of these dates are after the start date of the specified date. So if we change this, for example, to February 16th, notice how it's only task one, which is February 17th, and all of these other dates are not in that range, right? And this is only for dates that are started after February 16th. So this is just how we can get started and how we'll start building on it to find all dates that fit between the two dates that we specify here. What we can do next is we can just build on this formula that we started by going to our comma in front of the current dot name, clicking on shift enter twice, maybe three times to give it a little more spacing. And we're gonna add that second filter to create the between function that we're looking for. So as you can imagine, if we specify the date start of this range, we're gonna to need to do the same thing with the date end. And what's nice with the dot notation now with Notion formulas is you can just build iteratively on what you've already started. So what we can do is just add another filter function because we can layer filter functions within a Notion formula and use a very similar format to what we just created. So we're gonna be filtering by current. We want to think about the date end and where 
it might fall in relation to what you're comparing it to. So if you think about the opposite of this inequality, we just reverse that where it's less than or equal to. And again, we're going to also think inversely for the date start period by saying date end and then also specifying the date property in the project database. So when you close it up, close it up again. Now we've created that between function because now the date has to be greater than the start date or equal to the start date. And it has to be less than or equal to the end date that we are specifying within this date property. So let's see this in action. Currently, we just have February 16th to 17th, which includes that date. But let's switch it up by making it the month of March. So let's do March 1st to March 31st. And so now nothing shows as having the date between that range. So if we change this to March 10th, notice how that changes there. Notice how if you do March 9th, that also gets added in as well. This works as we've created, right? If it's April 1st, it's not going to be included in that range. But if we do March 31st, it gets included. If we want to make it so that it's exclusive, and we don't want to include the date end, we can just remove that equal sign. And now March and now task one, which is March 31st, gets removed, right? So vice versa, if I add that equal sign for task one for March 31st, it shows if I remove this equal sign, notice how that task one gets deleted, because we're not going to include the actual end date of the date that we specified. So those are the small things that you can slowly customize to your exact needs. And something I also want to illustrate is, for example, if we have a number of sorts, and if we want to add up all the entries or all the numbers that are specific to that date range, we can just go in here. And instead of selecting the name, we can specify the number, right? So we can extract the number property in which the date falls between this range. And then we can just add dot sum to add them all up. This can be particularly useful for any number that you might want to add up in relation to a date. This is a very quick and easy way to go a little step further and add up all the numbers that might fall under that range. That's another option that we can do. And again, with the current formula function, you can specify any other properties that you might want to show that meet this criteria of mapping and filtering on these two formula functions. So now we're just showing the dates that fall between this range. If we want to show the name, we just change that to name. And we just have that name ready to go. Hope this was helpful. Very simple formula, right? We're just relating it to the database and then creating two different filter functions to specify that range. And we can responsibly change these dates as needed to figure out which of these entries might fall in that range. This might be especially useful if you have a lot of entries related to another project, or if you want to sort an entire database by relating it to another one, and then using this simple series of formula functions to weed out what you're looking for. Well, if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.